message and data rates may apply. We will have all updates on Patrick Mahomes' knee. It's, it's knee watch today. The MRI is in 53 minutes. We will have that information for you here in Kansas City, the most important MRI in history. But before we get to that, joining us right now, we had actually asked our next guest, Brad Holdusen, to join us earlier in the week before we learned some unfortunate new stats about the rise in suicides. So new numbers came out from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, earlier this week. Uh, just alarming numbers, and we may get into some of why these numbers are what they are. Uh, and if you have questions for our next guest, feel free to text him at 22980. Uh, but the suicide death rates among teens and young adults have increased at what they're calling an alarming pace in the last decade. Again, this is CDC numbers. They look at ages 10 to 24, and they looked at 2007 to 2017. The number of suicides among people in that age group over that decade went up by 56%. Suicide has now become the second most common cause of death among teens and young adults, overtaking homicides and outpaced only by accidents. Joining us again in studios, his name is Brad Holdhusen, and uh, he is with the group uh, Fathers Club out of Johnson County. We saw the story in, on, in Fox, Nor uh, Fox 4's website. The rate of teenage suicide is startling. Many parents are searching for any opportunity to understand why. With tears in his eyes, uh, Vince Stevens, also one of the founders, told uh, Channel 4, uh, we're losing kids. The principal of Blue Valley High School is a great man who loves, who loves those kids, and he told me about the effect on the community when a student commits suicide. And that's why we have brought Brad in to discuss this further. Brad, thank you so much for the time. I wish we were having you in to talk about better things, but this is really, really important. First off, what is Fathers Club? Yeah, and we, you know, we will, I think you'll, you'll see that there are some good things in this, um, not just that main focus, but Fathers Club is essentially um, a group of dads, and, and the way I'll, I'll put it is we push a lot of dirt behind just a very, very simplistic movement of trying to be very intentional um, with kids, with other dads, with families, with administration and schools in our in our district in Blue Valley, um, quickly grown into a lathe. But essentially, those three lanes, kids, dads, and community, is what we focus on. Um, one of the main things that we did when, when Vince and I started some conversation about this um, late summer of 2018, we had that meeting with Principal Bacon, and long story short, um, through, through his heart and passion, we saw that not, you know, suicide, definitely a big one, but everything that leads up to suicide, um, not just with the kids and, and the families, but also, um, sadly, with parents. We, we deal with this in our school districts and in our communities with that as well. So um, suicide, but also opioids, um, uh, phone addictions, you know, that we deal with, with our kids, all of those things kind of led to um, pushing this direction on the father's part. Can you talk more about that, about what is happening? Um, you know, you've got four kids at home, what you see with kids, what you see in Blue Valley. What's going on with kids that made a group of you get together and think we need to do something more? Yeah. You know, the, the, um, it's a great question. One of the ways I would explain that is, um, first and foremost, one very loud thing I want to say is we have, um, first of all, we've, we've had our tails kicked, quite frankly, by moms have done phenomenal at being in the schools, being volunteers being very involved in the kids' lives. Awesome, right? It's almost like, a, in, in the way I've explained this multiple times, like a fork and a spoon. Um, they do phenomenal things, and then we just want to do phenomenal things alongside them and compliment them because we do, we do things differently as dads. Um, so that, that really is the main push. Um, and in doing so, when we heard Mr. Bacon's heart, um, we, just, we told him, we simply want you to envision a bunch of dads locking their arms around you, the administration, the school, and so our very first event that we decided to do, not with a lot of planning or thought behind it, we're like, you know what, when we were in high school, we loved food, let's bring a bunch of food, surround the entire school, and pass out uh, chicken biscuits in the morning to all the kids as they were coming to school. And that was really the first kind of um, uh, physical and literal showing of us dads locking arms, so to speak, around the school and having a presence. Are you, are you, are you guys trying to squash the mom-dad stereotype? This is what it, you know, it's, it kind of sounds like moms get, and, and look, my mom did all the work and my dad went to work and I understand that. Is that something we need to change? Yeah, I do. I, I believe so, personally. I mean, you, um, very unintentionally, you got great dudes. You know, I could, I could sit here and tell you story after story of great dudes who are phenomenal dads and they do great in the workforce and they do great things on the home front. 
but it's just it, it's an un, sometimes an unintentional consequence whenever volunteers are needed what or what have you mom step forward and dad's not necessarily step backwards but they just kind of get disappear in the shadows a little bit but that intentionality there's there's a different i can tell you just in the cadence of our own home there's a difference when my wonderful wife um, does phenomenal things and sits down with our kids there's a difference when i do it as well too right so one thing I've tried to intentionally do a few times, I don't do as much as I should, is just lay down next to my 18-year-old son before he goes to bed and try to get some conversation from him and uh, try to just listen. So that, there's a difference in that dynamic than there is if my wife does it. She does it way better and way more often, but that is needed more. It's needed more in my own house. It's needed in a lot of houses. As we talk about these teen suicide numbers being up, and it's not just that, um, as you mentioned, kids are... I can't even imagine being in high school today, but with the bullying and the phones and, and kids are really busy and, and there's a lot more stresses on them than there used to be. What message does that send to kids, do you think, that the dads are stepping up to? Yeah. You know, kids learn like we did when we were their age. We learn by example. You learn by seeing and then you do. Um, and your comment on the phones is a big, big, big one. I've got four, t four teenagers in my house which are my, my wife and my's, and then we've got, you know, 12 other teenagers in the house with kids, and you see these, these phones are such a focus. So um, one of the gentlemen in our, in our uh, father's club makes always to the mention that they're the most connected, yet most disconnected generation ever. Um, and I can speak again to my own kids. They get so wrapped up in what's going on in that phone and in the interaction, quote unquote, of that phone, that they lose the depth and interaction of face-to-face -face contact, right? Of this, you get a lot more in body language and eye contact. So that's one one thing we're trying to sliver of something that we're trying to help and focus on as well. Talk with Brad Holt Hughes and co-founder of Fathers Club in studio here on 98.1 KMBZ or on Facebook Live. You know, one of the stories in the Fox 4 uh, report here is about uh, one of the guys going through their 16-year-old's son, uh, son's phone, excuse me. We're talking about phones. Is, is that weird? For parents to do do you do it I mean you yeah. have teenagers you have yeah. you know 15 kids or what you have four kids but it must be like 15 but <laughs> you have four phones in there I yeah. mean do you go through them I mean we is do. that weird no it, well it might seem weird uh, quite frankly there'll probably be some listeners that'll say that's really weird we should but again in the dynamic of our household and a lot of the dads that we talk through and, and, and interact with we absolutely do um, the gentleman you're referring to Vince Stevens mm. who's our co-founder and our president great dude a passionate guy, phenomenal dad. Um, he, he, the story he talks about by the first time he grabbed his son's phone, that came off of kind of a, a roll off of a conversation where he thought, man, I need to do that with my son. So yes, you find some things in there and, and parents will find things in those phones that will um, surprise you, bring you to tears, um, make you feel empty and hard, you know, but the reality is that stuff is happening daily throughout the day. So coming up, I want to talk more about these numbers. I want to talk more about what we can do about it. And I want to talk more about what parents can do to be the trusted adult for other kids that are not their own, because I think that's a big part of this also. And, and the questions that we should be asking kids, um, you, don't want to, you don't want to go fishing for problems that aren't there, but the questions that we should be asking to get to the heart of things that might be there. Mm -hmm. What I like about you guys, and we're going to talk more about this, is you're not some clinical expert. You're yeah. a dad. You're a dude. Yes. You know, you guys are all dads and you're all dudes, and, and you're like most of us who are raising families and whatnot. You're going through it. If you have questions for Brad, text them in, 22980. It's Midday with Jamie and Wicket. We'll get you that keyword of cash as well. Coming up next. Follow us on Twitter. We are still live on Facebook, so don't say anything right. inflammatory. <laughs> we are still live. Kill the monitor. Please. Let's keep going for a bit. We'll save the good stuff for the air. That sure. way people who aren't watching on Facebook Live don't miss anything. But you really caught my ear when you said, you know, the 12 kids that just hang out at our house yeah. also. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. About it. As somebody that taught high school for a while and might, you know, I'm kind of the, the, the friend or the aunt yeah. for a lot of my friends' kids. The importance of that other person in your kids' lives that yeah. they can go to if they feel like they can't go to you. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that's and without naming names I left my house this morning they don't have school this morning right so we had my own four kids and literally four other kids spending the night and one of the boys you know I've got thankfully great relationships with a lot of my son's boys I've coached for years 
um, tried to be really involved. He's like, Mr. Holdy's not, you know, I hope we get a chance to play ping pong before. I'm like, oh, buddy, I got a mm -hmm. race. I was already running late. Yeah. So that type of interaction, you know, getting getting a chance, it's not about your point about we're dudes, we're dads. We are not experts. We don't know anything different or better or to act or do anything better than anybody else. But, um, but the neat element of being involved in these kids' lives is, even the passing of the chicken biscuit and looking and getting the eye contact mm -hmm. and getting a symptom. Then I see that smile. Yeah. Well, there's, there's that smile. And you give them a fist bump and they're like, all of a sudden, their demeanor changes. Their outside, their outside shell changes. So it's not necessarily asking the right questions to get at, hey, what's really bothering you, Joe or Susie? Like, they're not going to feel yeah. comfortable with that. It's just a, it's, it's creating an environment of comfortable interaction and realizing that these guys love us. They're here for us. And maybe they'd be more apt over a few months or so. Mm -hmm. A couple things I'm going to say for the air. We're getting a couple questions on the text line that I think are going to be important to talk about on the air. But one of the things I want to talk about is if you are a dad listening who maybe doesn't have a really open relationship with their kids. Maybe that was either that was always mom's job or I frankly wasn't really close to either of my parents. We were not a family that talked about anything. But somebody's hearing this conversation and hearing the numbers and, and you're scared about what you maybe don't know about your kids. Yeah. For Parents, this probably applies to both, particularly dads. How do you start to have a good relationship and an open relationship with your kids, especially if they're teenagers and yeah. they're like, Dad, I'm not going to talk to you about this yeah, stuff. Right. How do you start with that path? Yeah. You know, there is a, there, there's no more um, powerful element than touch. And, and there's nothing more simple, but sometimes if it's not a normal um, language, so to speak, in your house, it's not easy to do, but there's nothing more simple than just giving a simple hug. You know, right? So if, um, and, and that's one of the things that, that I, that I love to do with other dads, with, with, with boy, you know, my buddies that are my, uh, my kids as buddies that feel comfortable doing. So I'll give bear hugs to all of them. And that is just that simple touch or grabbing. Hey, I hope you have a great day today and making sure they get eye contact. I love you. Um, those simple things, touch and tell them you love them. Um, everybody can do right now right that's and, and that's a slow movement towards what else can come from that over time i know it sounds simple but is the goal to have this go beyond blue valley and olaka i mean are you seeing interest from around the metro yeah in fact uh our event this sunday night on, on uh, the 20th at 7 7 8 30 at the hilltop convention center um we, we've got um rex hudler's going to be our key keynote speaker so to speak nice that could go anywhere he, exactly. <laughs> that could exactly. go anywhere uh -huh. that's the beauty of it right that that's uh -huh. what we want guys to come and not mm -hmm. feel intimidated like oh i gotta have a certain polish or a certain whatever i gotta be extra well, hud doesn't have any polish no you're good <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're good so yeah it, it'll be fun but but the intent of that is is to show that whether you're introverted, extroverted, mm -hmm. no matter what background, you know, it, it doesn't matter because we're all just dads. We're all just mm -hmm. trying to figure this out together, and it's and we're better together. That's a big tagline of ours. Is your one year anniversary this weekend? It actually technically August first was our very very first meeting. Okay, when you asked about growth. There was zero intention for growth at at the initial onset. It was let's what can we do for Blue Valley High School, and then fast forward the schools during the school year last year. Had a meeting with a phenomenal man, Mr. Dr. Todd White, um, our superintendent, and he couldn't be more excited. And we were starting to do some mental health first aid things, which I'd love to chat a little more oh, about. Oh, for sure. Um, where we yeah. trained 26 dads last year. We plan to do 100 by the end of this school year um, with an event that's going to be Dang. talked about um, and, and announced on the 20th this Sunday. So. And you want to, I think we can bring up Sunday. Yeah, obviously to promote. Please, yeah, for sure. Please, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 104, that Hilltop. Convention Center right off 143rd and 69 Highway. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, um, and you don't have to answer the question, but I'm going to warn you about it. Right. Have you ever had a moment with any of your four kids of, uh oh, you know, you found something on their phone, yeah. they said something that made you think, yeah. I, okay, I need yeah. to dig further into and this. And I can do that without jeopardizing my kids. Don't name names. Here we go. Yeah. Your keyword to cash this hour? Guitar. G-U-I-T-A-R. Guitar. You can text the word to 72881 for a chance at $1,000 in this national contest. Message and data rates may apply. Joined in studio by the Fathers Club co-founder Brad Holdhusen here in studio talking about mental health first aid 
And it, it's weird to say making sure dads are more involved in their kids' lives. And that's one of the things that I, I really, what I get out of this, Brad, is we always talk about what are the signs, what are the signs, what are the signs my kid is depressed, and then the ultimate end game. hopefully no one ever sees that, is suicide. You guys and your group of dads in Blue Valley and Olathe, and it's expanding, it's preventative almost. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get to, because people always are texting in, what should I be looking for? Mm -hmm. You're not a psychologist. You don't know these things. No. You're a dad. You're a dude. Uh, but it's the idea that don't let it get to the point where there are signs. Yeah. You know, what? that to me seems like what you guys are, what your mission is. Am I wrong? Yeah, that's that's part of the mission. I mean, our mission is we are a grassroots effort trying to, to essentially be intentional within, again, dad's kids. And so there's multiple aspects to that. But, but yes, I would say in a perfect world, um, and again, I don't want a blanket statement for all the dads because everybody comes from different angles. In our house, yes, it's an attempt to be preventative. It's an attempt for, the, for, for my kids and all the kids I come across, all their friends, to help them feel like, man, I'm, I am worthy. I don't need to get likes or, or clicks or thumbs up or whatever the stuff on the social media or Snapchat. Because I, if a kid can leave my house and say, man, Mr. Hold Hughes and Mrs. Hold Hughes and they really love me. They want to feed me. They give me a hug. They give me a high five. They let me hang out. It's a comfortable place. Um, you know, that's the type. We don't want to do a flash in the pan events, right? Like the chicken biscuit deal. Mm -hmm. We want to continuously do those with, with a good cadence and always be around so that instead of affecting, you know, a day in a culture, we can, we can transform the culture of hopefully our schools over time. And that takes a while. But yeah, that's the preventative part. What kinds of things should parents be looking for? Um, you know, we talked about the new suicide numbers. They are horrible. Somebody asked on the text line, we were talking before the break about going through your kids' phones because that's one way to look and see if they're being bullied or look and see what they're dealing with online. And somebody asked, what do you mean go through the phones? And I'm going to extend that and say, what should parents be looking for? That might be a red flag. And then what do you do about the red flag? Yeah. Well, here, first, any, if any teenagers that, that we know hear this, are going to be like, man, Mr. Old Houston's going to bust the code here. <laughs> um, but, it, but it's, you know, uh, another one of our dads in the Father's Club um, does a really cool thing with his son. He goes, tell you what, you can look at my phone. How about we'll make that deal? You look at my phone anytime, I'll look at your phone anytime. So that's a pretty neat contract, so to speak, between a father and a son. And they got a really cool relationship. Um, but that took, t t you know, that happened over time. So looking at the phone... Of course, they can delete things and Snapchat disappears and so on and so forth. But um, there are tools out there. Um, and just to be very candid, my wife is the guru on the technology side. She'll show me, you know, that as she's going through things, hey, look, this might be something we want to keep an eye on and so on. But there's ways you can you can be involved in. And, and again, and I'm not the technology wizard on this, but you can be involved in the kids' accounts and be able to see what's going on to a certain extent. Um, you know, outside of just text messages, which they can delete, or, or internet history. Um, and, and look, when I was a kid, I did stupid stuff. I just didn't have, we didn't have the ability to capture it, right? So they're doing the stupid stuff we did. So if we catch it, it's not like, let me slap your hand and ground you. Let's, let's talk through this. Okay, let, well, how does that affect you long term? Because you don't have maybe the maturity to realize what this does at, through repetition over many, many, many years. I want to ask a question that we talked about uh, on the Facebook Live off the air here for a minute because I think it's important, particularly for parents that are listening who maybe don't, and, and dads, since we're talking about dads, who maybe don't have a really close relationship or really open relationship with their kids. But there's, it's never too late to start that. you yeah. know. If, if, and so for those parents who are listening and, and these numbers that we're talking about are alarming, and we talk about needing to, I think, for me, it starts with getting to know your kids. Yeah. You know, what's normal for one kid might not be normal for another, and that's kind of what you need to know is what the baseline is. How do parents start to have an open relationship, particularly with teenagers who yeah. might think that's a little strange? Yeah, yeah. And, and look, it is strange, right? It, it, because the, our culture tells us that. I'm not supposed to talk to my parents. Or parents, you're not supposed to get involved or, you're, you know, um, be over. You don't want to be a helicopter parent. None, none of us do. But um, as I was mentioning off air, one of the most simple yet powerful things that you can do is just give your kid a simple hug and tell them you love them. Um, in such a simple act, they may, they may look like outwardly they're rejecting it, they don't want it, but do that with repetition. And, and, see, and that will crack, you know, there's no more powerful thing than the power of touch, right? Um, and that will start to crack the code, I think, a little bit. And it's not that simple. Some parents out there are going, man, I can't remember the last time I said I love you or I hugged my kid, which 
they're probably pained inside. I guarantee the kid is pained inside, but that's a simple way. You don't have to have a psychology degree. And, you know, we were talking offline with it that as dads, we don't, we, the de- myself, Vince, as co-founders, and all the guys on our board, again, studs, great dudes, we don't know, you know, Hill Bean's any different than any other dad. <laughs> exactly. Dad. That's kind of the beauty of this because dads are like, okay, great, we're all in the same boat. And if I can give a fist bump to my bud, you know, my friend's buddy or my boy's buddies, if I can hug my kids, tell them I love them, and start to change that environment in my house, slowly but surely, that, that can lead to other things. How old is your oldest? 18. I will bet 18 years ago, when you and your wife were having your first child, you didn't know how to be parents. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? And, and you don't know how to be a dad from your perspective, I'm sure. And that, you just kind of learn. And, and, and I, I'm going through for the very first time right now. Yeah. I have an eight-month-old baby. And you just kind of learn. You go day to day. From your dad's perspective, from the group's perspective, I'm sure it's great to have other dads who are like, I don't know what to do the first time around. I have no idea what to do that you guys have that open forum and dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. Not just from from younger kids, dads with younger kids, but also um, dads that have kids in college. Okay, give me give me some meat on how I can help and be intentional with my boy as he mm-hmm. goes to college or as he you know, gets married. Um, so you, you're always going to have dads that are ahead of you in a life stage, and that, that really helps to kind of draw from. You bet. You have questions? Text them in 22980. We're going to talk with Brad for just one more segment. You can jump in on the text line, 22980. They have an event coming up we want to tell you about. If you want to learn more, they're on Twitter, all right? You can follow them at fathersclub.org. Also, online, fathersclub.org. It's Midday with Jamie and Wicket. More with Brad Holt using from Father's Club. Uh, we'll get to some of your, your questions. We'll answer some of those after we go to Mark LaVoy in the KMBZ Newsroom. A controversial therapy could soon be outlawed in Kansas City. That's story is coming up. So what do you think about the suicide numbers that you heard? Well, he, he, here's something that will blow your mind. I went, um, it's it's crazy. It's it's astronomical. And obviously, as parents, we look at that and we think, okay, what is that connected to? And yeah. how can we change the trajectory? Yeah. And you can't change it overnight. It's trying to move the needle slowly so that over time that starts to, to, to die off, that statistic. But I went, uh, visited a family, and I don't want to talk about visiting a family at Merrill Labs, but sure. it was a phenomenal experience. Um but, but what I can talk about is after that, uh, I, I stopped to get gas at the gas station right down the block, and there was um, an ambulance that I saw just left there. And so I went over, and I talked to the ambulance rider, driver. Um, I said, I, I saw you guys coming from Merrillac, and, um, you know, were you dropping a kid off? Obviously, you wanted to give me gas. How often you know, do you guys do that? And she said, yeah, well, probably two to three times a week, you know, at different facilities. And then the other, her, her partner joined her um, in the passenger side, and he talked about... Um, he said, yeah, I started, I think he said, in two, nine years ago, um, 2010, 11. He said then we had three, four, five a year. And now, or no, five or six a year, I think he said, and now it's two to three a week. Wow. He said the youngest of which we had a five-year-old that was having suicidal thoughts. Wow. So, what in the world? Yeah, right? So there, there's, an, in, in, in a very unofficial outward opinion, that that has to be, that's coming in from school from screens of things right. that they're picking up and seeing that they don't know how to process. Right. Hopefully not coming from inside the home, but that statistic that so that 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 alarming statistic or simple fact from that ambulance driver makes you go, you know what, that's a, that makes it sad sense of the statistics of the increase in in suicide. And it affects every every single school and every community. You hear a five year old say something like that and my first thought is who are they mimicking? Right. You know, because a five-year-old doesn't understand the permanence of death, yep. doesn't understand the implication of that. Who are they seeing mm-hmm. say that, that they're just mimicking that? Yeah. And I'm sure there's more of stuff that I don't know about out there. Um, but, the you know, for one example is the, what was it, 13 Reasons Why? Just yeah. To, just, and I will boldly say this, most pathetic thing I've ever heard of. Why would anybody create or oh, put that on the that. Did you watch it? No. Okay. I didn't. It, it, no, what, did you? No. Okay. The argument from people we've talked to is that it raises awareness. Oh, that we that have was parents the... that say they watch it with their kids. Oh, okay. And well, then so, it raises awareness. So, and, and so shame on me for thinking it was that was the, in, in, you know, that was the buzz in the parent community. And it still is. We yeah. still talk about it. Okay. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Is that that's just that's showing kids that's that's um, you know glorifying suicide and showing kids what and how to think and what to do. So the mimicking piece. Not that five-year-olds out there watching that show, but right. but there's um, 
the stories are all too prevalent now, right? You hear them, and you, you say, We well, talk about them seemingly every other week. It's unfortunate yeah. that the yeah. numbers just keep going up and up and up and up and up. And there's no, like you had mentioned, what are the signs? In some cases, obviously there are. In other cases, um, we dealt with a couple suicides in our community. There was not, there was not signs. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. just seemingly had it all together, active and everything. Um, she takes her life at, as a sophomore. Um, and there just weren't signs. It, you, people are left scratching their head. Why do you not, can't you see past whatever that hurdle is of having resilience to, you know what, I got the rest of my life out there. This mm-hmm. little minute thing is just today, and I can get past it. It's the ones that don't talk to you about it that you need to worry the most. It's yeah. the quiet ones that you really got to worry. Because yeah. the ones that are really intent on it aren't going to tell you they're thinking about it. Right. Because they're really intent on it, yeah. and they don't. You know, I think most kids want the adults to intervene. Yeah. It's the ones that aren't telling you anything that you yeah. really got to be concerned about. Yeah. It, the, most kids want adults to intervene. Mm-hmm. That is, so we learned yep. that in our suicide, uh, our mental health training. They may not show it, or, or but they want that. They yeah. want that intervention. They can't say that. Yeah. They don't know how to say those words. Yeah. I want you to help me. But that's what they're, yep. that's the goal. Yeah. Um, For sure. I want to make sure I mention too about the, the mental health first aid training. It's on our chart, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Sure we... And that's for dads, mental health first aid training. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yep. Here we go. Uh, please. I'm BZ. This is Midday with Jamie and Wicked on 981 KM. A few more minutes with Brad Holt. He was in the co founder of Father's Club. In studio on Twitter at Fathers Club Org, online FathersClub.org. Now tell us about mental health first aid training because we're talking about relationship relationships, excuse me, between parents and kids. And we were just on the Facebook Live, we were discussing 13 Reasons Why. We we're talking about going through your kids' phones and all of these things, but it all comes back to your kids' mental health. Mm-hmm. And and you guys are trying to get some mental health first aid training. And what I love so much about you guys is you're not doctors. Yeah. You're just dads trying to figure this mess of a world out for your kids. Yeah. And there's freedom in that, um, admitting the fact that, hey, we're just a bunch of meatheads trying to do this. <laughs> right? There it is. There's freedom. And then other dads are like, okay, good. Now I'm comfortable. Let's, let's, let's dig in. So last year, um, we did a, uh, an event um, coupled up with NetSmart. We got together and we trained 26 dads on mental health first aid awareness. Um, unbelievable. You, you know, I, I could talk just you know 45 minutes to an hour just in and of itself. Unbelievable experience that tr- literally led to um, two that I know of, two or three that I know of conversations where dads in that training spoke with either other colleagues, other friends, um, other clients uh, in a comfortable relationship, realized something was off, and so they they applied what they learned and they said, Hey, do you have a do you have a plan to hurt yourself? Do you, are you okay? Is everything okay? Asking those questions, everybody's like, ooh, that's awkward. I don't want to ask it. And we learn in training, that's exactly what you need to do. Because you had mentioned, you know, Jamie off air, um, their kids and adults are not going to say, hey, man, I'm hurting. Mm-hmm. And I really wish somebody would ask me, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's that's three people that engaged in those conversations that ultimately led to potentially saving lives out of that one day of training of 26 dads. Wow. So what we're excited to, one of the things on the agenda to announce, we've got Another great man, Tim DeWeese, who's the director of Johnson County Mental Health. We've had him. Yeah. He's great. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's great awesome. dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be there, thankfully, on Sunday night. He's going to spend some time on the agenda talking about our partnership. And what's going on Sunday night for those that so, are Yeah, thanks. So mm-hmm. Sunday night um, at the uh, Hilltop Convention Center right off of Metcalf and 143rd, roughly. Um, we are going to have an event uh, that's going to be our fall uh, summit, so to speak. We're going to try to do at least two to three global events like this a year. Um Many things on the agenda, uh, but Tim DeWeese is going to get up and talk about mental health first aid and our partnership together and our goal. We've already got three dates set, so that will be announced on Sunday. It will be on all of our social media feeds and the website and so on. Um, But we're going to have three dates where we're going to cap it probably at 30 or 35 dads, but our goal is to train 100 more dads by the end of this school year. year. And then continue to see where this goes. Um, Also on that agenda, we've got you know Rex Hudler is going to speak. He's passionate and excited about um, Blue Valley West, which just came on board. We had a big chicken biscuit event at their school this Monday. So, And some other cool things. Our superintendent of schools, Dr. Todd White. So 
Let's move the event. If you want more info, go to fathersclub.org. Click the events tab. It's right there. You can see it again. Fathersclub.org. Click the events tab. Let's talk more, uh, come back to that for a second, about the idea that um, kids, I think, want you to stop them. Most kids, mm -hmm. I think, want to want you to intervene. Yeah. They don't really want to end their lives. They just don't want to feel that the way that they feel anymore. And our first job as adults, whether your parents or not, is to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Whatever they say to you, not to mock it and to get out of that idea of just tough up, toughen up yeah. and, yeah. you know, just power through it. You know, get over the idea that when we were kids... It wasn't as, um, you just have to remember that kids are dealing with different things than yeah. what we dealt with as yeah. kids. But you mentioned something that um, we've talked about before, in fact, maybe with Tim, that idea of just asking the question, mm -hmm. are you okay? Yeah. And see what kind of answer you get. And, yeah. and ask it seriously and wait for an answer. Yeah. Um, what else came out of that mental health first aid that people you know, the, would benefit from? The interesting, and in in I should have the gentleman's name, but he's spoken all over the country. and. Um, he attempted um, to take his life by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. And I'm going to very fastly tell the story. He was in the bus on the way there and was just waiting and wanting somebody to say, man, you don't, is everything okay? And he felt invisible. And the second he jumped over that bridge and his hands left the rail, he said he immediately had regrets and thoughts. Well, he had miraculously lived. Wow. Um, and his story is unbelievable. But now his passion is to tell you know, his story and, and tell people essentially you need to ask that question because um, kids typically, and again, men, adults, women um, are not going to necessarily look for that. To, to asking that blunt question, is everything okay? Do you have a plan to do anything to yourself or do you have a plan to hurt yourself or are you having suicidal thoughts is what that training is about. Let's talk a little bit more about men specifically. Um, women are just, and, and this is changing a little bit, but um, I think it is difficult for men in particular because you were not necessarily raised to be open about your feelings mm -hmm. and to, you know, and, and to communicate that and, yeah. and to, to say, no, I'm not feeling well. And, and there's more of a stigma attached to that, which is why I appreciate this group even more because yeah. we're also over, we're overcoming that stigma for men too, yeah. not just for kids and the, and, and the example that we're setting. How do we get men more out of that, yeah. uh, out of that stereotype and out of that stigma? Yeah. You know, there's no difference, in my opinion, in, in a teenager trying to figure out how to be comfortable in their own skin than there is a dad, you know, or a man trying to be comfortable in his own skin. And I'll tell you, for no other purpose than to give you a little backdrop, I love to hunt. I love to fish. I chew tobacco on a duck blind every once in a while. I love to have a cold beer. So there's, you know, those are the quote unquote. Men You're a guy. Things. I love that stuff. Yeah. Right? And I love hanging out with we'll, other dudes watching sports. We'll get to where he was last night. Yes. <laughs> he had a bird's eye view of the big tragedy from last night, but we'll get to that. <laughs> so all that to be said, the flip side of that coin, um, I, I would argue, there is there is uh, nothing more manly. Um, and I'm going to have a hard time getting this out because I think there's so much truth to this. <clears throat> there is. There is nothing more manly um, than being able to crack your chest open a little bit and talk about what's going on in life, whether that's to your wife, whether that's to your kids, you know, telling my kids how I've, you know, the mistakes I've made and how I've screwed up, um, but other buddies, you know, and there's, there is, there's a lot of freedom in that, just talking openly about, man, I'm, I'm battling right now with my teenager over this, or my wife and I are fighting over this right now, or whatever it is, that, that cracking that chest and being open, one, it releases and gets rid of it instead of stuffing it um, and, and it's a freeing beautiful thing you know it really it, it frees you up in life to be comfortable in your skin the mission if you go to fathersclub.org the fathers club is a dad-led grassroots effort creating simple ways for dads to be intentional with their kids with other dads within their community with resolve humility and love their mission is to be a catalyst for positive influence around the world you can go online to fathersclub.org learn more their big event is coming up on sunday make sure you're there on twitter at Fathers Club O R G, Brad, we thank you for being in here, man. I know that it, it, it's an amazing thing what you're doing. Like Jamie said, it's a stigma that guys have had for hundreds of years. Be the man, but this is a good thing. Yeah. This is a good thing. Before we let you go, for those that don't know, Brad got in a, into the Kansas City airport about one a.m. Why are we veering course here? Well, about <laughs> one a.m. Well, he's leaving. I got to ask him about this. This is this is important. Yes, it's important. Brad was Brad was in Denver last night. Brad was at Mile High last night. You were there in the end zone for Mahomes' injury. 
We're what? taking an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, right? yeah. highs talk and about lows. Men being open. Yeah, and, that's right. You know, being emotional on the air and now talk football. Did you, yeah. Did you happen to? Were you planning on going to the game? You were yeah, at. We, you were at the we, Chiefs game. I was there for today. business, and long and short, we we decided. You know what? We can't not be in Denver and go to the Chiefs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chiefs game, so. so you're supposed to be there anyway for business. We were and there then, for business. Okay. Yeah, oh, I was there with gosh. a bunch of colleagues for two days, but. Uh, so I was in I was in the thirty third row out in that end zone and <gasps> and that play was coming they needed that first down and so I was videoing I'm like oh this is gonna be good um, and got the whole thing on video you can't of course see Patrick Mahomes because he's on the bottom of the pile but you immediately I'm sure you all saw it on TV mm. the reactions even from the Denver's you know defensive line they turned around and they were hushing the crowd so I turned to my buddy next to me and I'm like yeah it's not good so it was it was a quiet stadium even in Denver well especially because the Broncos got their ass kicked in the football game. <laughs> I mean, then it was really yeah, quiet for, yeah. for the next two and a half hours. Well, I know you're running on very little sleep. We thank you for being here. Uh, your message is fantastic. We love it. Again, go online if you want to learn more, fathersclub.org. Brad, thank you again. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Brad Hold Hughes, and if you want to learn more, again, go online or follow him on Twitter, at fathersclub.org. It's Midday with Jamie and Wicket. This will be the last time that a certain pop superstar jumps into the arms of a fan. we got to tell you about this woman coming up next.